Hello and welcome everybody. I'm MTG Gaming Bob. Today I want to talk a bit about Dominaria United Collector Boxes. This is a fantastic product to get your hands on for a long-term hold. This is not going to be a great product if you want to try to get yourself an actual Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale or any of the other Legends cards that you might actually want to get your hands on. You're best off if you really want those cards just to purchase them. However, if you're looking for an exciting product to crack, just like a scratch-off ticket or any other lottery hit that you find in Magic the Gathering, this is a great product for that. Now, why will this product be a good long-term hold? Well, if you have been living under a rock, then you're unaware that they're going to be inserting Legends cards. That's cards from 1994 into 3% of collector booster packs. Now let's get into some of the details behind that because I'm hearing a lot of people talking about how we know what the print run is going to be because we can count the boxes on a table. Let me start by saying nobody knows anything other than that they stated that they're going to put Legends cards of varying rarities in 3% of collector booster packs. Now, does that mean that they used every single card that they opened? No. And there's differing accounts, even from Blake himself on the website which I will bring up here. Um, he talks about, in an article that's posted on Watsi's uh, website, about what they found in a warehouse just far enough away. They found case after case of Love of the Legend set sat on shelves waiting to be rediscovered. So what is he saying right there? He's saying that there was case after case, not pallet after pallet, which was in part of one of his videos. I'm not sure which um, information to believe because there's a drastic difference between a case and a pallet. They probably knew exactly where these were at and they had this intention all along. And they said that they're going to insert these Legends cards, which are not reprints, but found uh, in, in a warehouse from 1994, and they're going to randomly insert them carefully into 3% of collector booster packs. Does that mean that they're gonna use every card? No, as a matter of fact, they said they aren't going to use every card. They did say they had a limited number as well, but they didn't say how many of these cards they're going to be inserting into collector booster packs. So I can't say that there's gonna be 120,000 collector booster boxes. I can't say there's going to be 120 million collector booster boxes. I can't tell you what number there's going to be because the only number they gave was a percentage. And I don't even know how we would prove that. You'd have to know all of the collector packs in existence and open every single one of them to see if they hit the 3% mark. What does that mean? Well, if we can trust the 3% number, then you expect to find one Legends card in every 33 collector booster packs. That would be roughly 3%, 33 and a third to be exact. There are six boxes per case, and there are 12 packs per box, which leads you to the number 72. So theoretically, out of 66 of those, you should hit two Legends cards. So roughly two hits per case of collector boosters. Now those could be two common cards. They could be two uncommon cards. They could be two Pendrel Veils. You might hit zero because we're talking about percentages where you have one case that gets none and you get another case that gets four or five. Uh, that's just the way that percentages work out. Now, what this does mean from an investment standpoint is that you have a chance. There is a chance of pulling a Pendrel Veil until every pack is opened, that gambler premium to pull a Pendrel Veil or some other valuable card, because I believe there's like 70 cards that are above, I don't know, 50 bucks from current pricing out of the legend set. And you could pull potentially any one of those minus what's on the list on the Watsi page. I'm not going to go through the whole list here. It's quite extensive of what's not included, including racially offensive or socially uh, taboo offensive cards. Uh, either due to the artist or the artwork itself, um, that you can pull out of these packs. So what this means is in the long term, more than three to five years, 
that these are going to be a great hold. People are going to crack these. It's relatively normal priced collector box, slight premium right now, and there's a lot of hype. So I'm not saying run out and buy it. I'm saying that for a long-term hold, this is a product that I expect to appreciate. What am I basing that off of? The closest set that I can think of for this style of hype is the Zendikar, the original Zendikar, where they put the priceless treasures, uh, including old beta cards and um, Power 9. But they were like one, from what I understand, one in 20 to one in 40 boxes, right? So you're talking about a far greater chance of hitting something out of these collector packs than you are from a Zendikar box and for a lot cheaper price as well. The going price right now for a box of Zendikar on TCG is $1,500 and there's only one listed. I do see some recent sales around that $1,000 mark, but it's kind of a down market. So this is something that you can compare it to for a long-term hold. This is not something that you should buy if you are expecting to pull uh, a particular card. This is something that you get some excitement out of. You get that lottery uh, fix that you're playing with your friends or opening for your YouTube channel or whatever it may be and have that surprise lottery hit. You can potentially pull a $4,000, which if you grade it could be even more, up to $8,000 or so, Pendrel Veil. We do know that they pulled multiples is what they said. Again, we don't know the print run size. We can't know the print run size unless they tell us something more, like an equation missing uh, some of the pieces. So guessing from what we see, they didn't say they were going to put every card that was eligible that wasn't on the list in packs. Right? You could try to calculate those out, and you can't because you don't know that they're using every single card. We don't know that they opened every case that was sitting on the shelves or pallets or whatever the number was. We cannot judge numbers. I'm going to say that again. There is nobody that can calculate how much product is being printed for Dominary United collector boxes. They don't give us those numbers. They're unlikely to give us those numbers. So as long as we don't have those numbers and we don't know what's out there, and there's always a possibility, and the first time we see one pulled, it'll be confirmation of a high $4,000 card out of these collector boxes. It's going to put a premium on the collector boxes. Now, I'm not going to talk about the rest of the set because there have been no spoilers up to this point. So we don't know what they're going to put in the rest of the set. But I'll say this. The card that they're replacing is just a foil common. So essentially, it's a free shot at it. It's, it's a, basically a free scratch off. We're going to get box toppers, which we don't know it's there yet. We only know very few of the cards that are going to be in here. Um, we'll wait and see how good the actual set is, but I'm telling you right now, that Legends card is purely gravy on top of this. Commons essentially have no value. Not really. Uh, let's say they, they print a 4 or $5 common. That would be a great common. Um, that's the worst that you would be out of by getting a Legends card. So these are, should be in fairly near mint to mint condition, at worst light played by bad handling. So we'll see exactly what this product brings as far as the rest of the product line, but as far as a long-term hold, meaning buy it and don't crack it, put it up on a shelf, let it sit. This should appreciate fairly well. I didn't even plan on buying any. Uh, I bought fairly significant amounts of, for me, significant amounts of double master. So I really didn't have it in my budget. I had to stretch my budget to, to pick up the case of this. But as soon as I heard that they were inserting Legends and it was a possibility of Pendrel Veil, I just knew. I just knew that people are going to want to get their hands on this. People that never got to crack a Legends pack. Uh, I fortunately, my very first pack was a Legends pack. And it's the only Legends pack I ever cracked. I bought it for $10, and they only let me buy one at the store. They were sold out by the next time I went back. Sorry about that. So for those of you that have never been able to open a Legends pack, this would be a thrilling opportunity to open a valuable historical card. So this is a thumbs up for me for an investment perspective. Now, nobody can say that these won't go to zero. Nobody. However, I don't think it'll be worthless tomorrow. I do think this is a good 
um, I don't even want to call it a good product, but it is a good uh, flavor that they put in this. It's a good hook that they put on this product itself. So we'll see where the rest of, of the set spoilers uh, lead us to see if it's just a fantastic no-brainer with a pure you know, golden ticket inside of it. Uh, and it'll be fun to watch. So let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, let me know if you've been able to secure any, what your thoughts are on where this, is product, where this product's headed, if you believe that it will go up in value. Uh, I'd be interested to hear from you. Thanks a lot and have a wonderful day, everybody.